We're in the book of Ezekiel. We're looking at some of the marvelous prophecies towards the end of the book of Ezekiel. Perhaps one of the best known this evening from Ezekiel chapter 37 and the first 14 verses. As we read, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life and then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying there was a noise, a rattling sound and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. And then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, my people. I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land and then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it, declares the Lord. Toe bone connected to the foot bone, foot bone connected to the heel bone, heel bone connected to the ankle bone, ankle bone connected to the leg bone, leg bone connected to the knee bone, knee bone connected to the thigh bone, thigh bone connected to the hip bone, hip bone connected to the back bone, backbone connected to the shoulder bone, shoulder bone connected to the neck bone, neck bone connected to the head bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. Can you remember it? Them bones, them bones, them dry bones. You're not singing. Them bones, them, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Now hear ye the word of the Lord. Go something like that. You remember that song. Uh, we think of it as a very old spiritual, in fact it was only written about a century ago, uh, recorded by various artists, used in different television programs. Um, but that, that song reminds people of this passage from Ezekiel chapter 37, the, the prophet's vision of a valley of dry bones. It brings a message of hope to a hopeless situation, because God can bring even dead bones back to life. It points us to the wonderful salvation we have received through our Lord Jesus Christ. It gives us hope for the church in its discouraging state today. And it points us, first of all, to the hope given to the Israelites scattered in exile in Babylon. There they were, to begin with, scattered across Babylonia. Truly a hopeless situation, as hopeless as a valley filled with dry bones of warriors who'd fallen in battle long long ago. That's how the Israelites saw themselves. Uh, could there be any hope in such a desperate situation? The hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones live? Humanly speaking, of course, they can't. Uh, never, from a human point of view. Jerusalem ransacked, the temple destroyed, the nation of Israel scattered across Babylonia. The nation was finished. But the prophet realizes that what is impossible for human beings is possible for God. Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. 
with God, there's always hope. Anything is possible for God. And Jeremiah may well have been familiar with the prophecies of Isaiah from centuries earlier. Your dead will live, their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Even in Isaiah and Jeremiah's time, the Israelites believed in the possibility of life from death, even the possibility of resurrection. So God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones, say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you. You will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life and then you will know that I am the Lord. God can do anything he chooses. Nothing is impossible for God. So I prophesied as I was commanded. As I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. The bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. At God's command, these dry bones were brought together to make skeletons covered with flesh, covered with skin. Uh, but God hadn't finished because they were still dead bodies. There was more to do, so God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, say to me, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds, breathe into these slain that they may live. And so I prophesied as he commanded in me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. The breath of God brought life. Just as it had at the beginning in Genesis, God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The breath of God brings life to Adam and Eve, brings life to these dead, dry bones. This is the point where we have a tiny touch of Hebrew uh, to remind ourselves that there's a single Hebrew word which means wind and breath and spirit, the word ruach, uh, translated into Greek as pneuma. Uh, similarly meaning wind, breath, spirit. So when God commands Ezekiel to prophesy, it means this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breath, wind, spirit, from the four winds, breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied and breath, wind, spirit entered them. They came to life. God's divine energy, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit of God gives life even to the bodies of the dead, bringing them back to life. This was the message of hope for Israel. They thought our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we're cut off. But this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I bring you back to the land of Israel and then you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, you will live. I will settle you in your own land and then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it, declares the Lord. Here's the promise for Israel. Dry bones will live again. And God will put his spirit into them. And they will come to life. Hope for Israel. God will bring his salvation by putting his spirit in his chosen people. New life for dry bones. But this prophecy has other applications as well. It has a wider application, I think, for every human being because without God, for each one of us, our situation is desperate and hopeless. By nature, every human being is dead in trespasses and sins, but just as God can bring a valley of dry bones back to life, he can also bring life from death for each human being. The breath of God, the Holy Spirit, can give us life. That was in the background, that passage in Ezekiel, surely in the background of what Jesus said to Nicodemus, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases, 
You hear its sound, you cannot tell where it comes from, where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The wind of God bringing life from death, giving life to the dry bones in the valley. So it is that the wind of God, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit brings new birth and new life into those who believe in Jesus. Spirit gives birth to Spirit. And so we receive new life in Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit. That was the prophecy we thought about last week from Ezekiel 36. I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. And then you will live in the land I give your ancestors. You will be my people. I will be your God. There's the wonderful promise. To be made clean of all impurities. To be given a new heart, which is not as hard as flint, but rather is inclined to obey God. Filled with the Holy Spirit helping us to serve God that special relationship with God. Those are the gifts of salvation promised in Ezekiel, received by everybody who puts their trust in Christ. So the vision of the dry bones speaks to Israel. It speaks to the human condition. But the passage also has a wonderful promise uh, for Christians. We should think for a few minutes uh, about the application to churches of this glorious promise. Just before I came out, I was reading an immensely depressing article by a student of church growth uh, who says that all the major denominations are dying and doomed to decline further and further until they fade away. Year on year, they have fewer members. Uh, Anglicans, Methodists, URC, and within that, Baptists, we are dying, uh, declining by roughly 1% of members and 1% of churches every year. Uh, that's 20% decline since the turn of the millennium in members and in numbers of churches. Um, we could easily look at the state of church in Britain and, and think that it's pretty hopeless, uh, depressed by the spread of secularism, religious pluralism, the rise of materialism, consumerism, celebrity culture. I've spoken before about postmodern relativism and post-truth creeping into the church. Uh, we may be discouraged by the way in which so many ministers and churches are being led astray by false teaching and false teachers, abandoning the beliefs held by Christians across the centuries, across the world still, uh, about the uniqueness of Christ, uh, the nature of salvation, about the nature of Christian marriage. Many people could well think the church in Britain today looks more like a valley of dry bones than the living, vibrant body of Christ. We don't look much like the church in the book of we look much more like the exiles scattered across Babylon, trying desperately to sing the Lord's song in a foreign land. Without God's intervention, the churches are indeed, as ever, in a hopeless situation. But into that, Ezekiel's vision gives us the message of hope. Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Uh, human speaking, uh, the church seems to be dead, or, or if not long dead, then certainly dying. At best, it sometimes looks like Ezekiel's description of the dry bones where God's salvation was only halfway through. As I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. The bones come together, bone to bone. I looked, tendons and flesh appeared on them, skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Sometimes the church does look like skeletons with tendons and flesh and skin and bones, but with no breath in. But nothing is impossible for God. He can bring 
our dry bones back to life. He can breathe the breath of life. His wind can blow and we can live again. Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live and so I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them they came to life we stood they stood upon their feet a vast army and that's what we need we need the breath of God blowing through us we need to come to life we need to be standing on our feet the vast army of God we need revival then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open up your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. We need revival. We need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. We need the fulfillment of those promises in Ezekiel. We need God to renew the church. We need God's love and power breaking in, sweeping us away, the righty river of God's love flowing through us, cleansing, refreshing, sweeping aside barriers in our lives. Let me remind you again of, of some words of A.W. Tozer. Orthodox Christianity has fallen to its present low estate from a lack of spiritual desire. Among the many who profess the Christian faith, scarcely one in a thousand reveals any passionate thirst for God. We fear extremes and shy away from too much ardor in religion as if it were possible to have too much love, too much faith, too much holiness. Pray on, fight on, sing on. Do not underrate anything God may have done for you before. Thank God for everything up to this point, but do not stop there. Press on into the deeper things of God. Insist upon tasting the profounder mysteries of redemption. Refuse to be average or to surrender to the chill of your spiritual environment. Unless you do these things, you will reach at last and unknown to you the graveyard of orthodoxy and be doomed to live out your days in spiritual mediocrity. We need the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, to sweep through us. If God can bring a valley of dry bones back to life, and certainly he can, if God could restore Israel, if God can save us when we're lost, dead in sin, and bring us to life in Christ, he can bring his church to life. We need to come to life. We need to stand on our feet. We need to become the vast army of the Lord. So come, Holy Spirit, come. Lord, send revival. Lord, let it begin with me. Let's take a few moments and reflect on these words.